Valve has been selling discount Steam Decks left and right. They ran a big sale and they launched their certified refurbished program, making their handheld gaming PC more affordable than ever. But what they haven't done is make it better, which is fine because the Tech Tip Man is here to do it for them. With some of the money that we saved buying a refurbished Steam Deck, we put together an absolutely mwah, delicious menu of upgrades. There's the obvious ones like taking out the stock 256 gig SSD and putting in one of these rocket drives from Sabrent or throwing in some Hall Effect joysticks from Gillikit to shrink the dead zones and reduce the risk of stick drift. But if you're adventurous, you can go a lot deeper. Oh, higher resolution screen, anyone? Ooh, an upgraded cooling system. Let's keep going. Hey, oh, what'd we hit? It's the segue to our sponsor. Enlisted, take part in iconic World War II campaigns in this immersive, free-to-play first-person shooter that encourages teamwork, because contrary to popular belief, the Axis powers were not stopped by Rambo. Check it out at the link below. Let's have a look at what showed up in the mail. Our 256 gig model is packed pretty much identically to a brand new unit, with the only exception being these little tags that are printed on the packaging that say refurbished. And while the case has a couple marks and scuffs on it, notably a little dent right here, the Steam Deck itself is, I mean, immaculate. It even has that new Steam Deck smell. <coughs> Uh, maybe that's the cleaning products. Either way, it's, oh, it's great. So while your mileage may vary, we're really happy with our purchase and the only thing suggesting that this has been used before are some faint little lines on the D-pad, which we aren't stuck with. Take a look at this. While we were performing our two basic upgrades, we also replaced our buttons with this set from deckbuttons.com. They're textured to match the shell of the deck, so there's a bit of extra gription to them compared to the stock buttons, and the menu buttons are just a little bit more proud to the surface, so you can be more sure that you're actually hitting the right spot. At 50 bucks a set, or 25 for just the D-pad, they are pretty expensive for plastic parts, but also reasonably affordable. Just note that they require fairly deep disassembly, so there's some risk of damage if you're not careful. And uh, <clears throat> the same goes for our next product here. This monoblock is from Poseidon's Three Rings, and this is a super cool idea. Basically, it's a drop-in replacement for the stock cooler that, in addition to the APU, also cools the VRMs, the RAM, and the PMIC chips. They sent us both a Wave 1 version of the product to show you guys, and a warning that performance varied quite a lot in their first production run. As it turns out, at least part of the problem is that the heights of all the components isn't uniform between all Steam Decks. So they've seen results all the way from 20 degrees cooler than stock to 10 degrees warmer than stock. So I'll be interested to see how exactly ours performs. Before we get to that though, these buttons look flipping awesome. I'm not 100% on the difference in feel. I think that's going to be very personal it's preference. It's pretty subtle. But they look amazing. I love that. Installation of the monoblock isn't hard per se, but after you've opened up the deck and removed the old cooling assembly, you've got about 20 different components that either need thermal paste or a specific thickness of thermal pad applied to them. So I also wouldn't call it easy. The monoblock you see here is designed for Steam Decks with the silver motherboard cover. If your deck has the black cover, you would want a monoblock 2, which is also available for pre-order and is expected to ship early next year. Once you have your pads and paste in place, there's just three screws to hold the block in place and this little bit of tape to replace. I mean, this looks very promising, sitting around 40, 45, 67. This doesn't seem right. The CPU is running 20 degrees hotter than the GPU. They're both on the same die. 85, 86, 87. It's definitely not quieter. Nope. I think we better send this over to labs. As it turns out, my gut feel was bang on. The GPU managed to run about the same, but the CPU was running 20 degrees hotter, which is going to increase noise and hurt performance. And honestly, 
I gotta say, I'm not that surprised. I walked by while Jordan was putting the thing together and I went, hold on a second, dude, what are you doing? You're putting thermal compound on RAM and on VRM components. You can't do that. And he goes, well, that's what it says in the instructions. And he's right. But the problem with this is that only the die is going to have enough consistency from one steam deck to the next for the tolerances to be tight enough that you can count on thermal compound. For stuff like this, they can be off by a fraction of a millimeter up or down, and that's why we use thermal pads. Not because they perform better, because we have to account for that inconsistency and then mush these down a little bit to get good contact here. If you're relying on thermal compound for all these different components, no wonder you're gonna have a bad time. Now, as we're shooting this, P3R is taking pre-orders for a Wave 2, which upgrades the fin count from 23 to 60 and aims to improve mounting consistency, hopefully by addressing this. They're aiming to ship later this year for a little under 100 bucks, and we'll have a link in the description for that and everything else we show off in this video. Honestly, I feel like we should just remove our cooling upgrade. The good news is we're gonna get an opportunity because we are about to install the most exciting upgrade that we've got. Check this out. This is the Deck HD from FX Technology. It's a $100 replacement screen for the Steam Deck that boasts a higher resolution, 1920 by 1200 versus the stock 1280 by 800, better, though still in complete coverage of the sRGB color space, and an anti-glare coating, something that you would only find on the 512 gig version of the Steam Deck, which sounds great for a hundred bucks. So, uh... Why are you making this face, Linus? Well, I'm a little wary about some of the trade-offs. First, there's the performance hit. FX reports a 20% drop in frame rates at 1200p, which sounds pretty optimistic. I would expect it to be a little bit more. And then there's the battery life impact. With the Deck HD gobbling up as much as five watts of extra power at 1200p, you can expect to be making much more frequent trips back to the wall. Now, both of these issues can be mitigated by running your higher res display in 800p mode, but I'm doubtful that most of you are gonna wanna put in the work just for the color gamut improvement. Oh yeah, right, that's uh, trade-off number three. This is going to be a pretty invasive operation with FX estimating that it will take longer than two and a half hours to get this screen out and this one in. The good news is that's a one-time thing and you can use that opportunity to install this awesome freaking purple translucent case for the Steam Deck. The bad news is that trade-off number four is even worse than trade-off number three and has no upside whatsoever. Deck HD also requires the user to flash their Steam Deck BIOS with their custom firmware, which needs to be reflashed every time Valve pushes a new version of SteamOS. FX says they are optimistic about having the opportunity to work together with Valve to get support in the official BIOS, but I could also say that I'm optimistic that dbrand is going to stop mocking my height in their advertising. It could happen. It could. But it's not a guarantee. Let's see if this is worth it. FX Technology provides excellent instructions on their website, which is a really good thing because replacing the screen requires us to dig further into the Steam Deck than ever before. After removing our monoblock, we disconnect the battery, remove our upgraded SSD, and unplug the fan. Our order of operations here may have been non-ideal. Next, we disconnect the speakers, and then hang a left and disconnect the button board before we unscrew and remove the motherboard. Watch out, by the way, for the audio cable on the back. Now, we disconnect the display cable from the screen and carefully remove it. This is where things start to get a little sketchy. Using a heat gun or a hair dryer, we need to loosen the adhesive strips that hold the stock screen in place. And then when that doesn't work, we need to break out the tin foil to use as a makeshift heat shield and crank up the temperature. We don't want to push the picks in too far here, especially at the top of the screen as there are some delicate circuits there. We just carefully work our way around the screen and it should come out without too much of a fight. Now we take a detour from the Deck HD instructions because we want to replace the entire chassis as well. 
So we remove all the controls and start transplanting them into our purple case. At first, we were really impressed that Extreme Rate supplied us with replacement screws and springs. But then, upon further inspection, it turned out that they just couldn't be bothered to use the same threading as the genuine deck chassis. So we had no choice but to use the new fasteners or things would have started bouncing around inside our Steam Deck. With everything physically installed, we just need to flash the BIOS and we should be off to the races. This is amazing. How'd the screen install go? Uh, the screen install itself was pretty good. The uh, body swap was interesting. It looks awesome though. It looks awesome. Oh, I see in the notes, things got a little melty on the right thumbstick. Just a little tiny bit here. Oh, uh, not bad. No, no, oh, I can feel it. It's not bad though. It's not bad and like, it oh, I haven't even seen this side of it yet. Man, this makes the regular Steam Deck look downright frickin' boring. <laughs> okay, okay, but the screen though, the screen. Screen. This is immediately noticeable. Even if you're on like the homepage, the number of games you see on the list is so much more by default. Wow. Okay, uh, what is installed? Uh, F1's installed. Sure. Uh, installed. Tiny Tina's installed. Anti-glare coating. Yep. Not bad. It's about the same as the as the 512 official. Oh yeah, is this the 512? Yeah. I can't say for, oh my God, that looks so much sharper. 720p is fine for six inches. By the time you get up to seven, you can tell. The problem you're gonna see though, is you can also tell the performance hit. Well, yeah. I told you before, I thought their estimate of 20% was very optimistic. Yeah, definitely. We found there's like a quality difference in the the plastic, we think. Oh. The openings are slightly different, so this ones feel a little bit Yeah, the joystick doesn't feel good. as good. Especially down down yeah, to the down right. On the side there. Some people say that can be a factor of how much you tighten the screws inside. Okay. But there aren't like torque settings or anything, so Gosh. you just kinda do what you can. She's a little sticky. I think if I was gonna do this myself, I would keep the stock front. Yeah. And then I would just change out the back just to make sure that I'm not giving up anything in terms of the the face, the interaction. It's a lot less work that way too. <laughs> Does look so cool though. Yeah. You know what? In person, I would say the colors are more saturated, not in a bad way, in an inaccurate way, but in a greater color gamut way on the replaced yeah. screen. It's also It's about a 20% increase sharper. according to them for the RGB coverage. What is it with them in the number 20? With that said, man, 720p is not that bad, especially if you apply FSR or anything like that. And then compare the frame rates. Yeah, we're getting a locked 60 FPS here. We're getting a locked 37 FPS over here. That's better than it was doing before. Mm. We put the stock cooler back in yes, though, right? We did. Yeah, so that's not because our cooler is bad. This GPU is drawing six more watts than this one and we are getting about 66% the frame rate if we're lucky. Yeah, and they said three to five watts for their screen for extra draw. So that's, so that's also kind of optimistic. A lot. Regarding the BIOS update issues, it has to be done in desktop mode and it would have been nice if they at least told us to download the script before we swap the screen. Then you have to manually set the resolution in Steam properties for each game or the higher res isn't even available once you get in game. <sighs> like UI scaling, okay? It's gonna get a little bit more difficult to press things with your fingers because it's not really, you got especially my with, hands. yeah, especially with your fingers. Uh, you can change the UI scale. Okay. But this is another little thing that adds up. You have to um, go into developer mode. Yeah. You have to enable remote debugging. Okay. You then have to install Chrome. Okay, this is already a nightmare. And then you get to go to a URL that gave you a screen. Okay, so basically it's super cool, but they have a little bit of work to do before it's ready for prime time. Exactly. Okay. It's awesome, but it's not a consumer product at this point. How about we show you guys a non-invasive upgrade option? Sabrent just released this. It's a dock for the Steam Deck with a built-in M.2 slot for $80. That is $10 less than the official dock from Valve and you won't even need our stubby screwdriver, available now, lttstore.com, to turn a spare NVMe drive into an external Steam library drive. Now, obviously this 
8 terabyte drive that Sabrent sent us to try this out is <laughs> probably not the sort of thing most people would have lying around. But they have more affordable options starting from around $40 for a 500 gig NVMe SSD. So with just this for set... <laughs> <laughs> so with this setup process, which is basic basically as simple as popping off the bottom, chucking in an SSD, closing the toolless lock, and then popping it back on, you can be ready to access a much larger library of games on your Steam Deck and have a built-in USB hub, ooh, including power delivery so it can charge the deck through the hub, and HDMI output. So if you're the kind of person like, we saw so many of these folks at Whaleland who are using a Steam Deck as their only PC and they just carry it around when they're gaming on the go and then dock it when they're sitting at their monitor, this is all you need to have all of that and extra storage. I mean, I guess nothing would prevent you from gaming not on the go while docked, uh, or would it? Let's see. Okay, what's a game you have launched? How about Crab Champions? Is that installed on the dock? Oh, nope, missing executable. Oh, did I take the wrong drive? This seems like a good time to talk about how the setup could be a little smoother. <laughs> you see, if you install an uninitialized drive on the Steam Deck, nothing happens. So either you need to switch to desktop mode, make sure you have a password set, and then use the KDE partition manager to initialize the drive and then format a partition, or you need to plug the dock into a separate computer and go through similar steps there. Then you've got to mount the drive in the SteamOS desktop interface, make sure the permissions are set right, and finally, add it as a Steam drive via the desktop Steam client on the deck. And that's just to make it work one time. If you reboot the deck, you need to remount the drive. There are some ways around that, but one of the easiest we've found is using this script from GitHub user Squawp. Scalp. Cool. Scalp, Whatever. We're going to have it linked in the description. Insert standard disclaimer about always reading through a script before running it in a shell. And then from then on, it should just work like a reasonable person would expect it would. I should be clear that this is a Valve problem, not a Sabrent problem. So be sure to direct your complaints to the right department over there. For now, Jordan has done what exactly? I uh, just double checked to make sure the drive was recognized and uh, yeah, you're good to go. Oh, okay. So it just magically worked this time? Yeah, it likes me better. Oh, no, no, please don't eat me. Don't eat me, bats. Yeah, this left joystick is not great. Yeah. Sorry, dude. Found treasure. Sorry, am I supposed to be doing something right now? Uh, right. Probably. Given the steps required to get this dock working, I don't think we can say that it's really any easier than in replacing the internal drive, but it is nice to be able to use a, a cheap or even a high capacity 80 millimeter M.2. And it's nice to have a separate place to store your best enjoyed on the big screen games, leaving your internal SSD free for your on the go games. With that said, let's take a look at our final result. I'd say the thumbsticks are the easiest upgrade that we showed today and they are simply put, an absolute no-brainer. They are much better than the stock ones and very affordable. Upgrading the internal storage, that's nearly as easy and the price point is whatever you're comfortable with from $40 to I don't know, $1,000. If you need more storage, I say do it. The replacement buttons, these feel great and aren't too expensive considering that they're a low volume part, but they are not as easy to swap in as the thumbsticks and they don't offer as clear a benefit. As for the monoblock and the deck HD, I don't think either of those is gonna catch on for the casual users, but for the tinkerers out there, they're both at least interesting projects with potential for real improvements down the road, either in new hardware designs or improvements to firmware and integration. It's the kind of thing that I would consider doing on my own Steam Deck, but not the kind of thing that I would recommend, if you know what I mean. And I'd say the same goes for the replacement case, especially the front one, given that not only is it difficult to install, but we could end up going back in multiple times to play around with the torque on the screws to ensure that we get the feel of the thumbsticks right. As for the dock, that's one that I personally wouldn't get much use out of, given that I have a desktop computer that I would just use when I want to sit at the desktop, but I couldn't believe how many people were using them at Whaleland. A non-zero number of people said that they've switched to a Steam Deck or an ROG Ally for that matter for their primary computer and they just use it in docked mode at their station and then handheld mode to game on the go. For anyone like that then, the dock is a great value because you're comparing the price to 
I mean, buying a second computer, basically. And we've shown in the past that the Steam Deck is a pretty darn good value compared to a PC. So adding a little bit of cost for the dock, ah, seems to make sense. As for the refurbished deck itself, I mean, if every refurbished unit is even close to the condition of ours, it's an absolute steal. And you don't have to spend your savings on upgrades. Maybe you'd rather enjoy a nice dinner or a product or service from our sponsor. Enlisted. Enlisted is a free to play first person shooter that blends PVE and PVP together to create an engaging experience. Immerse yourself in historically accurate World War II campaigns with heavy emphasis on teamwork and squad based combat. Time to crack open a cold panzer with the boys. Command a squad of customizable AI soldiers and upgrade and equip them to adapt to any engagement. With over a hundred weapons and vehicles at your disposal, you have boundless ways of neutralizing the enemy. All this variability in equipment means no two firefights will feel the same. Enlisted takes a realistic approach to combat, with dynamic and destructive environments only adding to the intensity. The guns and vehicles are all so accurate, you may actually think you've traveled back in time. Whether you wish to play casually or competitively, there's a home for all play styles. And with crossplay between PC, PlayStation, and Xbox, anyone can take part in the action. Check out Enlisted using the link below and get an exclusive bonus pack. If you guys like this video, maybe check out the time we tried Windows on a Steam Deck. That was a thing that happened, and apparently it's better now, but um, that's not really saying much. <laughs>